Hey everyone, Professor Davis here from ChemSurvival.com and the YouTube channel ChemSurvival. Whether it's dissolving stubborn solutes or speeding up reactions, we often find ourselves wanting to heat solutions in the organic chemistry lab. But that comes with some considerations and common pitfalls, many of which we can avoid using a technique known as refluxing. So in this short video, I'm going to point out, first of all, why we need to reflux at all, and second, how we construct and run a reflux apparatus in the lab. Let's get to it. Let's begin by heating a solution to a boil without using any special apparatus. I'm just going to have a lab jack so I can get it in the field of view of the camera, a hot plate which will provide heat and stirring, and notice I plugged that into the non-variable power outlet. And on top of that hot plate I'm going to place a beaker with a spin bar. Now into that beaker I'm going to pour some water with a little bit of purple colored food dye in it to help us see it a little bit better. Next, I'm going to begin stirring and this will provide agitation to prevent bumping. And of course, I'm going to apply some heat through that surface of that hot plate. In a relatively short period of time, I expect to see that solution boiling. But what's more interesting is what's going on at the top of that beaker. Notice all the vapor escaping. Now if I accelerate this process, let's take a look at what happens. Notice that in just a matter of 10 or 15 minutes, I've managed to reduce the volume of my solution from about 100 milliliters down to about 50 milliliters. Now imagine if I needed to boil that solution for hours or possibly even days to accomplish my synthetic goals. Clearly, I can't just place an open container on a hot plate I'll lose too much of my solvent. The solution to our problem involves a few extra tools, specifically a 250 mil round bottom flask, a thermal well to provide heat, and notice that the thermal well fits the flask so they'll get in good contact with one another. I've got a blue keck clip which is optional. What's not optional though is a spin bar and a little bit of vacuum grease. I'm also going to use something called a Liebig condenser. Notice the Liebig condenser has an exterior jacket that's attached to hose barbs and a ground glass joint at the base that is of the appropriate size to fit into the opening of my round bottom flask. Finally, I'll need some clamps and knuckles and two pieces of tubing suitable for transmitting water. To begin building our reflux apparatus, we'll need a lab jack with clearance, a stir plate, so we'll be using the stirring feature this time, but we will not be using the heat source. Instead, we're going to use that thermal well to heat the appropriately sized round bottom flask. Notice that the thermal well is plugged into the variable power outlet. First thing I'm going to do is clamp the lowest piece of glassware in the apparatus, my round bottom flask. This way, by raising and lowering the lab jack, I can either apply or remove the heat source quickly from my boiling mixture. Next, I'll place a spin bar in the round bottom flask, and I'm going to add 100 milliliters of our water containing a bit of food coloring, just as I did previously with the beaker. Having done this, it's now time to be sure that I set up my apparatus so that my vapor can't escape. I'm going to apply a bit of vacuum grease to the ground glass joint of my Liebig condenser. And I'm going to place that Liebig condenser into the opening to my round bottom flask, giving a slight twist as I push downward to ensure that the vacuum grease spreads across the entire joint. When the entire joint appears clear, I have a ring all the way around, that lets me know that no vapor can escape from between these two pieces of glassware before reaching the condenser. Very important. At this point, if you choose, you can use your blue Keck clip to clip this joint to further secure it, but we're going to use a clamp on the condenser instead. Finally, I'll clamp that Liebig condenser in place to be sure that my apparatus is stable. Now it's time to ensure that the Liebig condenser remains cold. To do this, I'm going to place a piece of hose over my water source, and I'm going to run that hose from the water source to the hose barb on my condenser at the base this is very important. The source has to go to the lower of the two hose barbs. This will ensure that the water completely fills the jacket when it's turned on. 
But before I turn it on, I have to give the water somewhere to go. So I'm going to use my second piece of hose to attach the upper hose barb to a hose running to the cup sink for drainage. So I'll place that hose now in the cup sink in the back of my fume hood. With all my plumbing in place, I can now activate the cold water by very gently opening the cold water line. When I do this, notice that the condenser fills from bottom to top completely, so the jacket is going to provide a large area of cold flowing water which will create a cold surface onto which my solvent vapor is going to condense. Having done that, I can now raise my heat source and get ready to turn on the heat and begin boiling my solution. Before I do this, of course, I'll want to turn on my stir plate to ensure that I do everything I can to prevent the bumping. Once I'm stirring at a good rate, I'm going to activate my thermo well by turning on the variac. Once I have the appropriate setting on the varistat, I'm ready to watch my reflux take place. Notice as the water begins to heat up that it condenses on the cold walls of the flask and then eventually on the cold walls of the condenser itself where the cooling water is entering the jacket. As this process continues, the boiling water creates water vapor which ascends into the condenser and then when it reaches that cold area, condenses to a liquid and of course at that point gravity takes over and returns that liquid to the boiling flask rather than allowing it to escape. Using this technique, I can heat my aqueous solution to boiling for a very long period of time. Here I'm running it right next to an open beaker, and notice that after 10 or 15 minutes, once again, the beaker is beginning to lose significant volume. However, my reflux is not. To prove this, I'm going to remove my heat source by first lowering my lab jack, and then deactivating my thermo well by turning off the varistat. Once things are cool, I can remove that heat source and then recover my sample. To do this, I'm going to have to first deactivate the flowing water. And now I have an interesting challenge here. I have to remove this condenser without making a mess. In order to do this, I'm going to first naturally unclamp it from the rail. And once it's free, I'll remove it from the round bottom flask, keeping in mind that the drain hose is the one on the top. That's where I want the water to flow. So in order to get the last bit of water trapped in my condenser to flow into the cup sink in the back of the hood through that hose barb, I have to invert my condenser. Now I can remove the supply line and raise it above the level of the hose barb on the condenser, allowing it to drain into the cup sink without making a mess. Having done that, I'm ready to remove my condenser and both of my water lines and place them elsewhere. Once my apparatus is completely deconstructed, I can now confirm that while I've lost significant volume in my open beaker, the solution that reflux for a similar period of time has lost practically no volume whatsoever. This is the power of the reflux technique. It allows us to boil solutions for indefinite periods of time without loss of volume. Thanks for watching everyone. I'm Professor Davis from ChemSurvival.com and the YouTube channel ChemSurvival. See you on the next video.